This video is just a quick explanation of the code that's running inside a little Arduino Nano in an actual traffic light that I've put together. The code itself is not particularly tricky or doing anything special per se. There's a couple of little things that we are doing that might be of interest to people, so I thought I'd just run through it at least and give a quick overview. At the very top of the code, we start with a bunch of constant integers which pretty much define our pins on the Arduino. So digital pin 3, for instance, is a traffic light red light, amber is on 4, green is on 5. Uh, we have two lights on the pedestrian light which are on digital pin 7 and 8 and we have a speaker which gives a little bit of audio feedback to uh, blind people, at least it's, it tries to emulate that, and that's on digital pin 9. We also have a button pin on 2. Now this one's important because we have actually chosen, or I've chosen to use uh, interrupts to record any sort of button presses and act on it pretty quickly. And we're using interrupt 0 which is hardware attached to digital pin 2. Then there are two pedestrian acknowledge LEDs which are basically inside the switch when you press to cross at the pedestrian lights. It has a red state and a green state and we basically have separate pins for that. Inside the actual button press assembly for the pedestrian switch we actually have a dip switch which allows the I guess the mode to be set from auto where it will after 60 seconds it will auto change its lights just to show some activity or if we switch it the other way then basically we get a consistent flow of traffic from the, the cars and the yeah, and the pedestrians are actually stopped from walking until they press the request across button so that's on, on digital pin 10 then after that we go into uh, just a quick couple of variables that we need to sort of keep uh, as global variables. And the first one has to be set as a volatile int and that's basically a pin state which just records a low or high depending on what state it's in and it's for toggling purposes and we just set that from the pin 2 uh, will trigger a interrupt routine which will change this state. I'll get to that in a minute. Then we go into int counter. The counter is just creates a loop um, set length and drives the on time, the on time state for the light. And then we have a long, which is called last time, and that we initialize it at zero, and that's a counter for the auto timer, allowing us to, you know, to start uh, from zero and count up to a threshold level of 60,000 milliseconds, approximately one minute. Then we have a couple of integers here which are specifically for the audio tone that the speaker reproduces and then just set the, I guess, the tone or frequency that the speaker makes when it's called. And then finally that's the end of the global sort of variables and the constant ins for the pins. We now enter into the void uh, setup function where we, the first thing we do is make pins 3 to 12 outputs and rather than you know, calling each one a separate pin, pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, like this. We're just literally starting with a for loop and iterating through the for loop until we hit a threshold of just under 13. So 12, 12 pins will be made as an output. And this way we can quickly, with as little code as possible, make at least all of these an output. Pin 10 we actually need to turn back into an input and that has to be specifically set here, as well as digital pin 2, which, as mentioned before, we're using an interrupt and has to be set to digital to digital pin 2 where this hardware interrupt exists. The auto switch pin is here and it's, we just need to, after it's been turned into an output, we just need to turn it back into an input. That just makes it quicker and easier to set this up with less code. The actual attach interrupt is here and this is where literally we choose interrupt 0 which is digital pin 2 and when it detects a rising signal, we call press detector, a custom function that I've written. Last time equals millis is basically records the time that the machine, in this case the Arduino Nano, has been on for and then we use that later on to find out whether enough time has passed and then we digitally write the pedestrian LED green to high just so that it's the one that's on by default when you first power up the Arduino since the traffic light is in green mode and the pedestrian mode is in red just to begin with. We need to say green is meaning that it's ready to take a button press. When someone does press the button it turns red to acknowledge their button press. So it needs to start green to show that it's ready and uh, available for, for pressing but at this stage it's th there is no press detected. Okay, so just an explanation of this special function ahead of the void loop function. This is just a really simple custom function which returns nothing and uh, takes no arguments. It's basically a, it's called void press detector and it's it's the one that's fired when the button is pressed and the interrupt zero detects a rising signal. So 
The first thing we do is set pin state to equal high, and previously it would have been set to low, so now that it's high, we can check for that in our code later in the uh, void loop. Digital right, pedestrian acknowledge LED from green to red, so we just need to turn red high and green low. And that pretty much is all that's needed. There's no delays, no anything in this function since this is one that's associated with the interrupt routine. We, we need to get out of this pretty quickly. Then there are a series of custom functions here. This one's called void stop. And basically all these different functions here handle the actual switching sequence for the lights themselves. So in this case traffic stop we obviously need to make the red lamp high, we need to turn it on and turn off amber and green. But also if the traffic is red it also means that the pedestrian green can be high and the pedestrian red should then go low. So we can set up pretty much the switching pattern for anything where traffic stop needs to be called. The next function is traffic amber and similar to traffic stop we just need to make sure that the traffic light gets an amber as a high and low on red and green and that the pedestrians are set to red because we don't there's a risk of cars still obviously going through the intersection so we don't want pedestrians killed by you know, allowing them to walk across. When the traffic light is green we call this function which is void traffic green. Like the other two we've got red and amber are now low on the traffic light and green is set to high so that we now get traffic flowing in this state. Of course this means that uh, the pedestrians need to be stopped and so the red is high and the green is low. So now we enter the void loop. The very first thing we do is we ask ourselves has the auto switch been set to the auto timer mode and if so then do this code. Now this section here right down to here handles the auto timer mode everything associated with it. From the other side we re almost repeat the same code again but this time without the auto sequence timer operating and I'll explain that a little bit further just as I get through this first section. If the auto timer switch is enabled and this statement will test as being true we then fall into the next if statement which basically says if millis less than last time a threshold value is greater than the auto time delay and the auto time delay is set to 60 seconds uh, yeah, 60 seconds or one minute up here. If it's greater than one minute we will fall into the next line of code which basically will say digital right pedestrian LED green low and red high so we just need to acknowledge that the that someone a phantom ghost has pressed the button and now we need to change its state as if someone has actually physically touched it. Then we enter into this squeal sequence. Basically this is a for loop which handles quick successive writing to the pin 9 which handles the speaker and this little algorithm here, this little bit of formula here, creates the rapid succession of pulses that trigger that pin creating a squealy sort of sound. And this is just to let the pedestrians know that you know, the traffic lights are about to change. So then after that we call traffic amber. Traffic amber again sets the traffic lights to for the cars to amber and still keeps the pedestrians from crossing. We give that a second and obviously you know in the real world you probably go for a lot longer than that but let's just say that's how long we've got and then the traffic stop is called. This is where red is set to the traffic light and green is set to the pedestrian light. The while loop here takes care of the walk time for the pedestrians. In other words this loop is responsible for creating the delay without actually using a delay as such to give the pedestrians enough time to walk. A counter counts from 0 to 100 and basically can continually executes this code. The thing that's causing the delay is I guess this, this rapid succession of high lows that are being sent to the speaker pin again. This is faster than the previous one. This squeal creates a very fast changing sequence of pulses whereas this one is just consistently fast set by this delay here delay of 100 milliseconds and it loops through this fairly rapidly but these delay microseconds create enough of a delay overall for the walk time effect to happen as well as creating the sound so it's kind of dual purpose the counter is then incremented of course and then we go through that while loop until we eventually we're greater than 100 and falls out of that loop in which case the traffic amber is called traffic amber stops the pedestrians from walking while setting the traffic lights to an amber mode we then digitally write the pedestrian acknowledge LEDs from red to green by sending red low and green high counter is then reset so that we can reuse it later on counter is reset to zero and pin state is set to low as well this, this is so that the if statement in the next section uh, doesn't detect 
at a high after having the auto timer selection called. Then we just take note of what the time is since the last time the loop was triggered and we reset last time to the current millis that, are, that have passed now. We give it one second just, as a, just a, as a delay and then it will fall out of that loop into traffic green where we set the traffic lights to green and obviously the pedestrians are still at red and then we give the sound for no walking to the switch which toggles the speaker pin high and low but this time at a much slower frequency. It's the, the frequency is set to 1000 milliseconds or one second so that there's one beep per second indicating that it's not safe to walk at this time to for people that have got impaired vision. So the final thing just on this code is this if statement where we go past the auto timer. Say the auto timer switched off. We don't see that. It doesn't happen. But there still is a button press. Well, this code gets fired. When the pin state is a high but the auto switch is not detected, this code begins. And the code for this goes all the way basically to here. We create a little delay of 1000 after the button press and like before we do the squeal, call traffic amber, put a bit of a delay of one second in, we stop the traffic, we set the last time to, of the millis just so that the auto timer is updated as well. It won't fire off too quickly so we reset the timer here. Then we enter the while loop where the pedestrians can cross and again the delay, the same delay is created by this while loop incorporated with I guess the sound frequency of the notes being produced by this delay of 100 milliseconds. This is the same rapid series of beeps that as before. We increment the counter until we fall out of this while loop when it becomes greater than 100 where we enter traffic amber and digitally write the pedestrian uh, acknowledge LEDs from red to green by sending red low and green high. We have to reset the counter to make sure that the counter is reset for the next time we come through. We just set it to zero and the pin state to back to low and again we call a bit of a delay before we exit the non-auto timer version. And then finally the sort of default state I guess is the traffic green and the walk cycle beeps that come from the speaker and these are all again Again, governed by the same thing that governs the previous auto timer code as well so so that's a quick look at the traffic light code hope you enjoyed it I will post the code up onto github and include that in the comments below so please like and share this video if you can that'd be great and look forward to next time okay bye bye